Hi, welcome to a new video, and this one, um, I, I kind of feel like it's a rite of passage for every photography-based YouTube channel that at some point you have to review this camera, um, and, and the camera in question is this. It is a Canon EOS 5D, um, what's called a classic, so this is the first generation 5D, um, a camera that came out in 2005, so this is 18 years old now, um, and it was a prosumer camera that was launched, as I say, back in 2005, and body only back then, they sold for about, in the UK, around about £3,300, so a huge amount of money for the body back in um, its launch date. Now, I picked this one up from um, MPB, I'm not sponsored by them, I'm just saying where I got it from, and I paid £109 for this body, and it was rated in good condition, and given its age, it is in extremely good condition. Now, uh, for the purposes of this review, the lenses I've been using for it, I've, I've used two lenses, by far and away the most common lens I've used for it is this, the um, EF 50mm f1.8 Mark II, so the second generation one of those. It's a nice lens, the only thing that frustrates me a little bit on it is the minimum focal distance on it is 45 centimeters, so it's a bit distant for what I'd like, but still a solid lens. The other lens that I've been using with it is a cheap and cheerful EF 28-80 kit lens. So that is the very definition of a kit lens there. So this is a 3.5 to 5.6 28 to 80 as I say. Um, yeah it is 28 to 80 stop and think there for a moment. So all of the images that you have seen so far and are going to see are done around that combo. Let's start by talking about the camera itself. Now, as I say, 18 years old, 12.8, so as near as damn it, 13 megapixel camera. The key thing is it's a full frame camera, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to pick it up. Um, I've shot with Micro Four Thirds in terms of digital, I've shot with APS-C in terms of digital, I'd not shot full frame, and this was, to be blunt, the cheapest way of getting into full frame. So. That's why I went for it. That and the fact that the internet is awash with people heaping praise upon it. And I wanted to see, you know, A, what all the fuss was about, and B, whether it lived up to the hype or not. So I picked one up. Um, ISO range 100 to 1600, although you can extend that both below and above. Um, I think below down to 50 and above up to 3200, if my memory serves me. Um, it's got a fairly decent LCD view screen on the back. Um, joystick controller, control dial there, and another control dial on the top plate mode button over on the side here. It does pretty much what you would expect it to do, you know, it, it's got program, aperture priority, shutter priority, full manual, a few other bits and pieces on there, one custom um, channel that you can set up, or one custom mode that you can set up. Um, you can vary the autofocus between single shot, servo. It, it's basically, it, it's what you get on the tin. You can go and have a look at the specs for it online. They're, they're all accurate. Um, one thing that um, more modern shooters may find a bit unusual is it, memory-wise, runs off of a custom flash card. Um, I've got a 32 gig one in here, um, and that's good for, in all honesty, well over a thousand shots. So, the fact that it runs custom flash is not a problem, uh, sorry, compact flash is not a problem at all. So that's the basics of the camera itself. I want to run through quickly some pros and cons behind it and then I want to talk about a real world use scenario that I put it through. So 
first of the pros I want to go through is build quality. Now, I'm obviously only talking about the body in regards to this because the two lenses I've got are kit lenses. They're very plasticky. Um, you know, they've got glass in them but they're plastic bodied and they're not the most brilliant things in the world but the actual body of the 5D Classic itself is incredibly robust. It really does feel great in the hand in that regard. It feels like yeah, it's, it's bulletproof. It feels like you could hammer nails in with it all day. I don't recommend you try hammering nails in with it all day. Please don't do that with one at all. But it feels incredibly well built. Every single part of it is well put together. Um, it's not a weather sealed body not that I'm aware of anyway, but it is um, a magnesium alloy chassis with plastic cladding over the top of it. And yeah, it's just, it feels like an absolute rock. It really, really does. It has the typical Canon lugs on it as well, um, which I actually prefer over the hanging off dangly strap loops. I like these on Canons. Um, but yeah, build-wise, definite pro in that regard. It's just no way you can knock it. The only thing that would be nice on it, as I say, would be weather sealing, but it's an 18 year old camera. I'm not gonna argue in that regard. Okay, on to the second of the pros, and it's got to be the ergonomics of the camera. Everything just falls to hand really, really nicely. Um, it, it feels like it moulds around, certainly my hands anyway. Um, it is reminiscent in terms of that of um, my Canon T90, but you know the Canon T90 kind of gave birth to this look and feel of cameras and this shape, so that's understandable. Um, I am going to try and pick up at some point, there is a, an additional uh, vertical grip and battery pack, because I think that would be nice, but it, it does fall together nicely in the hands. The controls and all of the buttons are exactly where your thumb and your fingers fall. Um, depth of field preview is in the right place and everything just fits together quite nicely. It's got a wonderfully bright viewfinder on it as well. Um, one of the advantages that I'd, I'd been, you know, I'd read and seen about it being full frame is that you've got that huge image through the viewfinder and it really is nice and bright. It's got a decent eye point to it as well. Um, and everything is just where you would expect it to be. And it's not overburdened with buttons and options, which is really, really nice. Um, probably because it, by the way, doesn't shoot video. It, I didn't mention that earlier. Doesn't shoot video, this. Don't, don't buy it if you want video. And given its age, the video will be rubbish even if it had it, but doesn't shoot video, don't do it. Um, so yeah, second pro, without a shadow of a doubt, the ergonomics of it. Okay, on to number three, and for a lot of people this will be the key one, the reason why you look at full frame as an option when it comes to sensor size, and that's image quality. Um, and the shots you've just seen, uh, particularly the one of the leaves, uh, for me really do just highlight this thing, despite being nearly two decades old, its sensor is something special. Um, the amount of detail it can pull out of an image for its 13 meg is quite frankly ludicrous. Um, they're also, when shot in RAW, really nice to work with. There's a huge amount of latitude in there given the age of the camera. You know, the, there are things with a wider exposure latitude you can pick up now quite easily, but again, given its age, the quality of the image, you know, you, you can't argue with it. It is an incredibly good 
image that comes out of this camera. There's no way of, of arguing against that, and they're nice to work with in terms of raw files. Um, and of course, because it's full frame, that 1.8 on the 50mm here, or any other fast lenses, gives you that really narrow depth of field. Um, and that does allow you to do things that you wouldn't be able to do with an APS-C or a full frame, oh, sorry, an APS-C or a micro four thirds as easy. Now, if you watch my video about um, shooting bands on Micro Four Thirds, and I'll link that to that here, um, you'll know that's not always an advantage. Sometimes not having that razor thin um, depth of field is, an, is a plus. But when you want it, this beast gives it to you. It's a great camera in that regard. It really, really is. Also, one of the combinations in terms of image quality that I, I've fallen absolutely in love with is if you set out to deliberately shoot black and white and you set this thing at 800 ISO, shoot an image and edit it as black and white, but think about it as a black and white image going into it. The noise that you get from this at 800 ISO on a well-exposed uh, RAW file is absolutely wonderful it gives you this amazing um, noise and texture it, it's not film like but damn does it look good it's a really nice combination in that regard so yeah number three easily has got to be the image quality that comes out of this it's absolutely amazing and there's no other way of putting it and I understand now why people rave about the image quality coming out of the 5d Okay, the final um, pro, it seems like an odd one, but it is really good, is the battery life on this. Um, a fully charged battery on this just seems to go on forever and ever and ever. Um, that's a really nice thing to have. Um, now, I'm not just comparing that to my Micro Four Thirds gear, which is mirrorless, so obviously that does eat into the battery life a lot more. But even in comparison to, say, my um, Nikon D7000 or my um, Fuji S3 Pro, both of which are DSLRs, um, the battery life in this thing is, is quite frankly, astounding. It, as I say, it, it's a minor point, but at certain times it's going to be a real factor and really really useful and we'll come on to talk about that a little bit more um, when I talk about the real world use of this camera. Um, so yeah, battery life, it's, it's a small pro but it's a pro for me. Right, now let's have a look at some of the cons behind this because obviously not everything is rosy with regard to this camera. It certainly does have some limitations around it. And the first one I wanna start off with is the ISO range on it. Okay, so if you look at the true ISO performance on it, ignore the under and over extended range on it, you're looking at 100 to 1600 ISO available on it, um, which does limit the use situations for it. Now, the 100 isn't an issue. It's great to shoot at 100 through to 200 ISO, absolutely brilliant. And you can definitely get workable images out of it at 400, 800, you're better off, as I mentioned earlier, on moving over to black and white. So combine 800 um, ISO and black and white, really nice pairing. Um, unless you want to shoot it colour, you're going to have to run it through some kind of noise reduction software and some decent noise reduction software to clean it up a little bit. 1600 is getting borderline unusable. Um, it, it starts to degrade quite heavily and, and just looks nasty. Um, and the extended 3200 just no, just don't do it. So 
It, and I, no, I feel a bit bad criticising the camera for that because, to be blunt, the exposure range that you've got on this is pretty normal for a camera of its kind of age. Um, my Fuji S3 Pro has an almost identical ISO range on it and came out, you know, as near as damn it within the same year um, as this. So. It is a negative, without a shadow of a doubt. It does mean, for example, I would never use this to shoot gigs. Being perfectly honest, I, I wouldn't. Um, it would be far too inflexible in comparison to um, my Micro Four Thirds system. So, yeah, ISO range on it, it, it has to be mentioned as a, a con for me. Can't help it, sorry. Okay, on to the second con, and this is a small one, but it's a really, really, really important one. And the 5D is notorious for this, and I'm glad I read about this before um, I, I made a mistake with it. And it's to do with this seemingly simple thing, but the door to the CF card storage. You see, what happens is, if you've shot a load and it's still writing to the card and you do that to open the door it powers the entire camera down and stops writing to the card and you lose your images which is just really 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 silly considering in particular the prosumer nature of the camera i can understand that if you were daft enough to eject the card while it was writing you know you kind of deserve all you get there but just opening the door shuts the camera down no that that's silly canon did rectify it on later models but the fact that it exists at all is definitely a con and something if you are going to pick up a 5d you need to be aware of Okay, on to um, con number three. And this is actually linked back to pro number one, the build quality. With build quality this good comes heft. This is a heavy camera. It really, really is a bit of a beast to carry around. Now, the two lenses that I've got for it, as I said, they're kit lenses, so they are lightweight, um, but you have this thing over your shoulder, you know you're carrying something around. I also found that because it is so big, just throwing it in my messenger bag to, you know, go out for you know, an hour or two, or, you know, if I'm just popping down the shops and I want to make sure I've got a camera on me, um, it, it kind of makes this hard choice to, to pick up. So it is one of those ones where you need to be a bit more slow and contemplative if you're going to take it out because it is heavy and there's no two ways about that and if you stuck some expensive glass on it yeah it's going to get heavier um so yeah bulk is definitely a con behind this thing but again it's it's 20 years old and as a result it's it's not a big surprise you know i would level exactly the same issue against my fuji s3 pro and that's an APS-C sensor camera and easily weighs as much as this. So in terms of cameras of its era, it was good. In terms of 2023, it's a negative. Okay, the final con is the autofocus system. And again, this is, is this really a con? Well, it sort of is, but let me caveat that a little bit. Now, first of all, for the time this camera came out, the autofocus on it is exceptionally good. Okay, for the time it came out for 2005, it is a really quick autofocus system. It's accurate, it does the job, it doesn't hunt much at all. It's absolutely great for when it came out. Um, in terms of these days, 
it, it, it's slow, it's inflexible. I mean, you, you've got five AF points in there, if my memory serves me. It might be more than that. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many it's got in there, because the only one that I found I could really, really trust reliably was the one slap bang in the centre. And that's the one I ended up using the most as a result. So, yeah, it's, it's quick enough, but it, it, it is something that you are going to notice particularly if you're coming from um, more modern gear. You know, if, if you've got another camera and you're picking this up, you are going to notice it around the autofocus. Um, and again, it lower light conditions limit it a bit more than that. Is it unworkable? No, absolutely not, um, as I'll come and talk about in a moment. But is it something that does need highlighting? Yes, I think it does. So those are the pros and cons of the camera. What I now want to spend a bit of time talking about is the real world use of this, because you know, is this a camera you can take out and shoot and use at an event or something in 2023? And the only way to find that out is to actually do it, which is what I did. Um, so recently, um, an annual event that's held in the town I live in, Swindon, it happened, which is the Swindon Paint Fest. So this is a huge town-wide street art uh, painting festival. So you get people painting giant murals on the side of buildings, you get street art displays, workshops, um, various people putting on crafts, people out drawing, dancing, music, all sorts of things go on. Um, and I spent an hour or so around one of the areas on the Paint Fest um, where there was some street art graffiti demos going on and a few other bits and pieces. And I did take two, uh, two film cameras with me. Okay, so I did take two film cameras with me. Um, but I also, as my only digital camera, took the 5D, so no other digital backups. I took the 5D, the 50mm and the 28 to 80 that's it digital wise, and shot the event on that because I wanted to see what it was like to use. Now, the end results of this, first of all, I'm really happy with the images I got out of this. And um, when I posted them in community groups in the town, people loved them. So from that point of view, it succeeded, absolutely. You can shoot stuff on this in the real world and people will love the results. There, there is no question about that. In terms of using it, now this was a predominantly outdoor event. I shot a couple of things um, indoors, um, but it was a really bright summer's day, so there was a lot of ambient light coming in there, and I don't think I had to go much above 400 ASA, I'm sorry, 400 ISO at any point. And indoors it was still getting a bit noisy and a bit messy, so it was better outdoors than indoors, but still not unusable. Had it been night, I think we'd probably have ruled it out in a lot of cases. Um, autofocus, not a problem at all. I had to, yes, rely on the center auto point focus and do a lot of hold and recompose and shoot off of the back of that, but I never missed a shot that I was going for or wanted as a result of it. Um, and it was quick enough at actually locking focus on in these conditions. So it worked incredibly well in that regard. Um, I didn't have any real concerns about carrying the camera around with me because the build quality gave me that reassurance without a shadow of a doubt. But after an hour, hour and a half or so, yeah, I did know I was carrying something hefty around with me. So it did start getting a little bit wary, but it wasn't quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. But the end result, the image quality that I got off of it, um, absolutely fantastic. I loved working with the raw files for these, the Canon colours, the colour that this thing is, again, 
renowned for. Um, absolutely brilliant and it worked really well with the street art that I was shooting in this situation. Um, and the end results, yeah, I, I found absolutely brilliant. So in terms of an 18 year old camera being used in 2023, does it stack up? answer is quite simply yes it does now you're not necessarily going to be able to use it in all the circumstances as I mentioned earlier I wouldn't go and shoot a nighttime gig inside a pub or a club or a bar with this because it's not going to be up to the job in a lot of cases but if you are shooting in daytime you want to shoot landscapes you want to shoot people you know you, you, you're working within the capabilities of the camera absolutely this really is still a valid choice in 2023 um, and this is not a camera that i'm going to shoot just for this video and put it back up on the shelf and never use again quite the opposite i found myself despite the cons and the main one in the in regards to what i'm going to mention now being the the bulk and heft of it i found myself picking this camera up and taking it with me a lot more than i thought i would very often just this combo the body and the 50 um 1.8 on there a combination by the way that you can get for easily under 200 pounds um and you can shoot images with this that quite frankly have image quality that I would put with the best of them in terms of DSLRs, um, absolutely, and the full frame sensor means you've got a bit more cropping ability within there as well, but yeah, really nice camera to use, really, really pleased that I picked this up, I genuinely can't believe how cheap they are, I think it's an absolute bargain um, for what it's capable of doing, just think about the cons, are they things you can live with, if they are, yeah, the, this is most definitely a camera I would recommend as still being very, very, very valid in 2023. So that's it. That is the Canon 5D Classic and my thoughts on it. That's my obligatory phot photographic video um, on it done. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when new content gets uploaded. Thanks very much, everyone. Take care. Bye. Thank you.